Now, two weeks ago, you had a, uh, a lecture by Mike, okay? Hope it went okay. And he talked to you about um, laminar flow and the introduction into sort of friction in fluid pipes. Today, I'm going to talk about the other type of flow, which is called turbulent flow, okay? And so today's lecture, we're going to... Last week, as I said, we covered laminar flow. This week, we're going to do turbulent flow. We'll talk again, it's the same sort of process to go through deriving the equations. We're going to talk a little bit about shear stress, okay? And then that will help us determine the pressure drop that we use in Bernoulli's equation, delta P, okay? And, uh, and that in introduces an important, fact, uh, important term called the friction factor that we use to determine the pressure drop in a turbulent system, okay? Um, and friction factor is denoted as little f. And we use something called the Moody chart, which um, I've got a big person, person here, this thing here. This is the Moody chart. And we use this to determine our value for the friction factor, F. And what we're going to do is today we're going to go through all of these things, okay? Um, and we're going to cover a, uh, an example as well. But this will help you um, solve all of the different types of problems that we could possibly encounter with this sort of system. Okay. So, very same situation to last week. Okay, we have a pipe. Um, and we've got flow coming through the pipe. Okay, we've got a pressure this side and a pressure this side. And we've got shear stress at the walls of the pipe. Okay, and also between the layers of the fluid. Now, you covered last week the difference between laminar flow and turbulent flow. Laminar flow is very nice streamlines. Okay, uh, they were straight. There was no radial flow at all. And it was very orderly and nicely, um, you know, works very well. You can analyze it analytically, okay? The problem with turbulent flow is that it's very chaotic, okay? We can't deal with that in the same sort of way. You've got uh, flows acting radially, going backwards, going forwards, all over the place, okay? And in reality, most flows in pipes are turbulent, okay? So we need to know how to solve this sort of problem. Laminar flow is very, very... Uh, um, rare in, in pipe flows. It does exist, but it's, you, know, you need something that's very, very viscous, okay, and moving very slowly in a very small pipe. Okay? As we know from the Reynolds number, we've got uh, rho CD upon the viscosity, okay? or C is the velocity of the flow, D is the damage of the pipe and the viscosity. So you have a high viscosity, low, low velocity flow, and a small damage of the pipe, you've got a low Reynolds number, and hence laminar flow. Okay, but in reality, that sort of thing doesn't exist. We deal with turbulent flow. So again, we've got this pipe going on, okay? And Bernoulli's equation, we saw this last week. Okay, you've got, obviously, the pressure at point 0.1 equals the pressure at point 0.2, but because we've got the shear stress, we've got a pressure drop, which is delta P, okay? And a lot of this lecture is to do with how we calculate delta P. So... The first step is to look at the shear stress in the pipe. And the difference between this and the way we dealt with it in uh, laminar flow is that we can use dimensional analysis like we did in the last, last set, uh, lecture of semester one. Okay? We don't know what the relationship is, but we can try and determine it from experimental results. Um, and so these are our table of variables. We've got tor. Um, door, W, sorry, which is the wall shear stress, okay? We have the density of the fluid, the viscosity of the fluid, the average velocity of the fluid, the pipe diameter, which is also known as the bore, okay, and the pipe, and the pipe roughness. Now, this term here, epsilon, is, is a new term for you guys. And so, with dimensional analysis, we can say, well, the shear stress is going to be a function of all of these variables, okay? And as we know, to put that in a general term, we just have all, all the variables with their um, exponents that we don't know yet, okay? And uh, multiplied by some constant that's non-dimensional. And so if we go through the dimensional analysis method like we did, we can uh, substitute all those values with uh, values for dimensions, okay? Obviously, M is mass, L is length, and T is time. And then obviously raise though, these terms to the power of their exponents, and you go through the process to solve for M, for L, and for T, okay? Now, you'll notice we've got three equations, but we've got five unknowns, okay? Well, we need to um, 
basically, we, the, the way to about this is we need to go and solve for them, um, but we leave two unknowns, and I'll show you that. Basically, um, if we keep B and F as unknown, we can solve for A, D, and E in terms of B and F. Okay, so we have E is minus B times minus F, okay, and we've got D is 2 minus B, and A is 1 minus B. And so, we, although we don't know B and F, we can solve for all the others. And what you can do is you can reorder that equation if we plug those numbers in. Here we've got B, 1 minus B, B, 2 minus B, and minus B minus F, and F. Well, you can group those Bs and Fs together, okay, and you end up with a, a, something that looks like this. Now, you should recognize this. What's that? It's 1 over the Reynolds number, isn't it? Yeah? Rho CD upon mu. Okay, and this term here is what we call the relative roughness, and I'll cover that in a second. And so what we can do is we can rearrange this um, equation, and we end up with a, um, a non-dimensional pressure term on this side, okay, because tor is given in pressure, that's pascals, okay, and obviously one-half rho c squared, what's that? Dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure, exactly. So you can, if we multiply both sides by, um, well, multiply... If we divide by that and divide by 2 again, okay, or we'll multiply by 2, we end up with 1 half rho c squared, which we know is a pressure, and that's underneath a, a pressure, okay? Shear stress can be given in pressure. And then we end up with, so that's non-dimensional, and we end up with these two non-dimensional terms. Obviously, we've already recognized this as Reynolds number, or 1 over the Reynolds number, which is why there's a minus 1 there, okay? And we recognize this term is known as the relative roughness. And so that's a non-dimensional wall shear stress, Okay, there's the Reynolds number. And then there's this thing called the relative roughness. Now, relative roughness. Basically, we can make pipes out of all sorts of different materials, okay? Um, obviously, in, your, in the domestic central heating system, you'll have copper pipes generally, okay? Uh, for foul uh, pipes or wastewater pipes, they'll generally be plastic, okay? Um, but obviously, in large pipelines to, uh, you know, across across the wastelands of Siberia, shipping oil, obviously there'll be a different material that's going to make those pipes, and obviously large sewers will be concrete, all sorts of things. And they all have different properties. One of these important properties to do with this is the surface of the internal walls of the pipe. Okay? And that will affect how the flow flows down the pipe. If you've got something that's a very, very smooth surface, obviously you're going to end up with a very smooth flow. Okay? But if you have something that's got a very rough surface, the friction factor goes up and it, it causes the flow to be much more turbulent. And so this relative roughness term helps us to determine how rough the pipe is compared to its diameter. And so we have, basically, the, we have this epsilon value and that's measured in metres, okay, millimetres. And obviously, um, that's defined by material or manufacture method. As we said, there's different materials and different ways of making pipes, and they did vary in smoothness. And that's represented by epsilon E, which is measured in metres. Obviously, to get the relative roughness, you have to divide that by the diameter. And obviously, the diameter is also measured in metres, so this is a non-dimensional term. We've got something measured in millimetres or metres, divided by something measured in metres or millimetres, and you end up with something that's non-dimensional. And that's called the relative roughness. And so, we, if we go back to work out the pressure drop, we had our equation for shear stress, okay? And that's related to the Reynolds number and the relative roughness. And so there's our equation for shear stress that we saw. And what I've done is I've replaced the K term that was at the front with this letter F, okay? And so essentially, F is a number. We call this the fanning friction factor. And that's a function of these two terms, the Reynolds number and the... Um, relative roughness. We're not quite sure what the function is, uh, and in reality it's actually quite complicated, but let's just assume that some function of these two numbers, okay? And what we can do is we can obviously rearranging, we can say, well, F, if you stick this up here, we can say F is, well, that's the um, we can say that's the shear stress, it's going to be F times one half times by rho c squared. So some number, our friction factor, which is a function of these two things, multiplied by the dynamic pressure will give us our shear stress. 
And we also know that shear stress, this is from last week, is this term here, d upon 4 times the pressure drop divided by the length, okay, equals this. And so, by, again, by rearranging, that, that was what we had on the previous slide, we can end up saying that this is going to be the pressure drop is 4 times our friction factor times by L divided by D multiplied by the dynamic pressure. Okay? Now, this term here, 4F, we actually, that's called the fanning friction factor, or F is the fanning friction factor. But what, we'll, what we actually do to simplify things is we come up with another friction factor called, which is little f, okay? And that's the Darcy friction factor, and that's 4 times f, okay? So we end up with, we can replace that on here. And we end up with this equation. Now, this is a very important equation. The pressure drop in a turbulent system, or in fact in any system, okay, is f l upon d times by the dynamic pressure, Okay? You don't, need, you don't need to worry too much about the derivation of this, but it would be quite a good idea to remember this. You will get this on the, on the equation sheet in the exam, but you'll be using it so frequently, like Bernoulli's equation, that you won't fail to remember it. Okay? FL upon D times by one half rho C squared is the pressure drop in a pipe. Okay? So we know what L is. L is the length. Okay? D is the diameter. And obviously, this is the dynamic pressure, which is one half rho c squared. Rho we know is the density, and c we know is the average velocity. Okay, so we know L, we know D, we know the dynamic pressure. But what about F? How do we determine what F is? 